Hello guys! This time, we're going to discuss the trigonometric identities. But first, let us differentiate conditional equations from identities. By definition, conditional equations are equations which are true only if the conditions are met. The following are examples. x plus 2 equals 3, 2y equals 7, and sine 30 degrees equals 8. In equation number 1, x plus 2 equals 3, this equation is only true if x is equal to 1. In example number 2, 2y equals 7, this equation is true only if y is equal to 7 halves. In the third example, sine 30 degrees is equal to a. It's only true when a is equal to 1 half. Whereas identities are equations which are true for all values of x element of the set of real numbers. Here are some examples of an identity. m plus 2 equals 2 plus m. The product of x plus 1 and x minus 2 is equal to x squared minus x minus 2. And cosine x equals 1 over secant x. Now let's try replacing the variables with any value that we can think of. So let's say we replace m by 1. We will have 1 plus 2 equals 2 plus 1. Simplifying both sides, we will arrive at 3 equal to 3. Now what if we would like to replace m by, let's say, 4? We will have 4 plus 2 equals 2 plus 4. We will have 6 equals 6. So that means replacing the variable with any number, we will always arrive at a true statement. It also means that in terms of the number of solutions, Identities have infinitely many solutions, while conditional equations have a limited number of solutions. Some examples of identities are the identities for negative. So if we have sine of a negative angle that is equal to negative sine theta, you can explore in this by replacing symbol theta with any value. So for example, we have sine negative 30 degrees equal to negative sine 30 degrees. So let's see, we have sine negative 30 degrees, then equal according to the identities for negatives, we will have sine 30 degrees. Using our calculator, Take note that our calculator should be in degree mode. Um, sine of negative 30 degrees, that is 0, negative 0 0.5. Then negative sine 30 degrees, that is negative 0 0.5. So we can clearly see that the two expressions are equal. Aside from the identities for the negatives, we also have the basic trigonometric identities. These are the reciprocal identities, quotient identities, and the Pythagorean identities. We can use the superhexagon or the tan sine cos hexagon in forming the basic identities. In forming the reciprocal identities, we will consider the functions which are located on the vertices of the hexagon, which are opposite to each other. So for example, we would like to get the reciprocal identity for tangent theta, okay? Tangent theta, here is tangent theta, then we have cotangent on the opposite vertex, so that means we will have one over cotangent theta. Now what if we would like to get the reciprocal identity for secant theta? Here is secant theta, opposite is cosecant, so we will have 1 over cosine theta. So can you form the other reciprocal identities using the same technique? Now let's form the quotient identities using the superhexagon. 
this time, we get the three succeeding functions. In order to form the quotient identity for tangent theta, all we have to do is to get the ratio of sine theta over cosine theta. Now, what if we would like to have the quotient identity for secant theta? Now, let's have secant theta. Can we have counterclockwise direction? So, let's say we have this. Okay, then we can form cosecant theta over cotangent theta. Okay. So that means we can form the quotient identities in either way. So we can have counterclockwise or clockwise manner. So just get three succeeding functions. Now what about the Pythagorean identities? We can form the Pythagorean identities by following the arrows. Okay, so this means that we will have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. We can also have 1 squared plus cotangent squared theta is equal to cosecant squared theta. The same with tangent squared theta plus 1 squared equals 2 secant squared theta. We can use the basic trigonometric functions in simplifying the given expression 1 plus cotangent squared x all over cosecant squared x minus 1. Now take note that there are exponents in the expression, so it is convenient to use the Pythagorean identities. Now looking at the superhexagon on the right side, we know that 1 plus cotangent squared theta is equal to cosecant squared theta. So that means 1 plus cotangent squared x can be simplified as cosecant squared x. Then the denominator would be cosecant squared x minus 1. Note that in the Trigonometric identity 1 plus cotangent squared x equal to cosecant squared x, we would be able to derive another identity. Transposing one to the other side, then we will have cotangent squared x equal to cosecant squared x minus 1. So that means our denominator is equal to cotangent squared x. Applying the reciprocal identities, the numerator would become 1 over sine squared x. Okay. Then in the denominator, we will have the quotient identity for cotangent squared x. This time, we're going to use cotangent theta is equal to the ratio of cosine theta over sine theta. So, cotangent squared x can be expressed as cosine squared x over sine squared x. Simplifying the complex fraction, we would have 1 over sine squared x times the reciprocal of the denominator, which is sine squared x over cosine squared x. We can cancel sine squared x. This will be 1. Sine squared x will be 1. So simplifying, we will have 1 over cosine squared x. Okay. Applying the reciprocal function for 1 over cosecant squared, okay, cosine, opposite is secant. So that means 1 over cosine squared x would be equal to secant squared x. Now we were able to simplify 1 plus cotangent squared x all over cosecant squared x minus 1 as secant squared x. 
Aside from the basic trigonometric identities, we also have the other trigonometric identities for the sum of two angles, difference of two angles, double angle, half angle, complementary or the co-function identity, the sum of sines and cosines, and products of sines and cosines. You might be wondering why do we need to study the trigonometric identities? The purpose of studying these trigonometric identities is to express an expression, especially a complex expression, into another form, find exact values without using a calculator, and prove that an equation is an identity. Let's have example number one. Use the fundamental trigonometric identities to find the values of the other five circular functions. Given that cosine x is equal to the square root of 3 over 2 and sine x is less than 0. The first thing that we should do is to determine the quadrant at which the angle lies. So we say it was given that cosine x is equal to square root of 3 over 2, which is a positive value. So that means cosine x could be found on the first quadrant or on the fourth quadrant. Okay. However, on the second condition, sine x is less than 0, meaning that the value of sine x is negative. In the quadrants, we have a negative value for sine x in the third quadrant and in the fourth quadrant. Considering the two conditions, we shall conclude that the angle lie on the fourth quadrant. Now, recalling the ratio for cosine, Cosine theta is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So that means the adjacent side is square root of 3 and the hypotenuse, which is also equal to r, is 2. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we can have r squared equals x squared plus y squared. Substituting the value of r, which is 2, and the value of x, which is square root of 3, we will have square root of 2 equal to the square of square root of 3 plus y squared. Simplifying, we will have 4, then we will have 3, and you just copy y squared, transpose 3 to the other side. So we will have 4 minus 3 equal to y squared. Then we will have 1 equal to y squared. Extract the square roots on both sides. So we will have y is equal to 1. Now since y equal to 1 is below the x-axis, we shall have negative 1. We can already get the exact values of the five circular functions using this triangle. However, it's, it is part of the instruction that we need to use the fundamental trigonometric identities in finding the values of the other five circular functions. So going back to cosine x is equal to the square root of 3 over 2, we would be able to get already the value for secant x. We know that cosine x is the reciprocal function of secant x. So we can express secant x equal to 1 over cosine x. Replacing the value for cosine x, we would have 1 over square root of 3 over 2. Simplifying the fraction, we will have secant x is equal to 1 times 2 over square root of 3. Now, we will have secant x equal to 2 over square root of 3. However, we have to rationalize the denominator since it is not accepted to have a radical sign in the denominator. So, we multiply the value secant x 
equals to 2 square root of d by square root of d over 3. So we will have 2 square root of 3. Then square root of 3 over 3 is equal to 9. Extract the square root of 9. We will have 3. Therefore, secant x is equal to 2 times the square root of 3 over 3. So for the sine function, we're going to use the Pythagorean identity. So we know that sine squared x is plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. Substituting the value of cosine x, which is square root of 3 over 2, we will have the square root of 1 minus the square of square root of 3 over 2. Simplifying further, we will have square root of 1 minus 3 over 4. Then 1 minus 3 fourth is equal to square root of 1 fourth. Extracting the square root, we will have sine x equal to 1 half. Now recall that the value of sine x is negative since it is located on the fourth quadrant. So we will affix the negative sign. We know that cosecant x is equal to 1 over sine x. Substituting the value of sine x, we will have 1 over negative 1 half. Simplifying that, that would be 1 times negative 2 over 1. Simplifying further, we shall have negative 2. So therefore, cosecant x is equal to negative 2. For tangent, we are going to use the quotient identity. We know that tangent x is equal to sine x over cosecant x. We know that the quotient identity for tangent x is equal to sine x over cosine x. Now we know that sine x is negative 1 half and cosine x is square root of 3 over 2. Simplifying the complex fraction, we will have negative 1 half times 2 over the square root of 3. We can cancel 2 here, so we will have 1. Now, we will have negative 1 over square root of 3. We rationalize the denominator, so we shall have negative square root of 3 over 3. For cotangent x, all we have to do is to get the reciprocal of the value of tangent. Originally, it's equal to negative 1 over square root of 3. So therefore, we shall have cotangent x is equal to negative square root of 3. Now let's have example number 2. Find the exact value of cosine pi over 12. Note that pi over 12 is equivalent to pi over 3 minus pi over 4. Therefore, we can write cosine pi over 12 as cosine pi over 3 minus cosine pi over 4. Applying the identity for difference of two angles for cosine function, we will have cosine pi over 3 cosine pi over 4 plus sine pi over 3 then sine pi over 4. Using our hand trick, we would be able to get the exact values of these special angles. So we will have cosine pi over 3 is equal to 1 half. Cosine pi over 4 is equivalent to square root of 2 over 2. Sine pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2. And pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. Simplifying the expression, we will have square root of 2 over 4 
plus square root of 6 over 4. Writing them as 1, you will have square root of 2 plus square root of 6 all over 4. That's it. Cosine pi over 12 is equal to the square root of 2 plus square root of 6 all over 4. Let's work on example number 3. Find the exact value of cosine 60 degrees minus sine 30 degrees. There are two possible ways in answering this question. The first method is using the exact value of special angles. The first method is using the exact value of trigonometric functions of special angles and the other one is using trigonometric identities. Now let's have first the first method. So cosine 60 degrees minus sine 30 degrees is equal to, you know, that cosine 60 degrees is 1 over 2, while sine 30 degrees is also 1 over 2. Simplifying this, we will have 0. The second method is using the trigonometric identities, specifically the co-function identity. We copy cosine 60 degrees. Now, sine 30 degrees can be expressed as cosine of 90 degrees minus 30 degrees. Simplifying that, we will have cosine 60 degrees minus cosine 60 degrees. Hence, we will also have 0. Now, let's have example number 4. Suppose sine A is 1 third and cosine B is 1 over square root of 3. A lies in quadrant 2 and B lies in quadrant 4. Find sine A plus B. It was stated that angle A is in quadrant 2 and angle B is in quadrant 4. We also know that we also know that sine A is one third, forming the ratio that is opposite over hypotenuse. So we have here one, then the radius or hypotenuse is three. For cosine B, we know that cosine is the ratio of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So adjacent side is one, then hypotenuse is 3, square root of 3. Now, we recall the identity for the sum of two angles. So for sine of A plus B, we can have sine A cosine B plus cosine A sine B. So we have to get cosine A and sine B. To find the exact values for this particular angle, we have to solve the triangle on the illustration. We know that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. When r is equal to 3, x is equal when the hypotenuse 3 we will have r is equal to 3 then we have the opposite side which is the y that's equal to 1 okay simplifying this we will have 9 then transpose 1 squared which is 1 to the other side so we will have 9 minus 1 equals x squared so here we have 8 then we have x squared. Extract the square roots. So we have x equal to the square root of 8. The same thing with the other triangle. We know that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And r is equal to square root of 3. Then we have x equal to 1. Then we solve for y. So this will be 3. Then this is 1 plus y squared transpose 
squared, then you will have y squared is equal to 2. Extract the square roots on both sides, so y is equal to square root of 2. Okay, so let's plot now. So since it's below the x-axis, square root of 2 will be negative. Okay, then for a, since x is at the left of the y-axis, then you will have negative square root of 8. Okay, so we're ready to solve for sine of a plus b. Hence, for cosine a, we will have negative square root of 8 over 3. Then for sine b, negative square root of 2 over square root of 3. We now replace the expression with the exact value. So sine A is 1 third. Cosine B, that is 1 over square root of 3. Cosine A is negative square root of 8 over 3. Then sine B is negative square root of 2 over square root of 3. Multiplying, we will have 1 over 3 square root of 3. Then we will have positive square root of 16 over 3 square root of 3. Then we know that square root of 16 is 4. So we will have 1 plus 4, that will be 5. Then copy the common denominator. We will have 5 over 3 times the square root of 3. We then rationalize the denominator. So we multiply the fraction by square root of 3 over 3. So hence, sine of a plus b is equal to 5 square root of 3 over 9. Now let's have example number 5. We have simplify the expression tangent of pi over 2 minus x all over cotangent x using trigonometric identities. Now we know that tangent pi over 2 minus x that's equivalent to cotangent x so we're writing tangent of pi over 2 minus x over cotangent x the numerator is just equal to cotangent x okay using the co-function identity so cotangent x over cotangent x, that is equal to 1. Now let's have example number 6. Prove that tangent a sine 2a is equal to sine squared a. In proving identities, all we have to do is to select that side which is more complex than the other. Now let's say we have determined that the left side in this statement or equation is more complex than the right side. That means we have to express tangent a sine 2a as an expression equal to the right side, which is 2 sine squared a. Now applying the double angle identity, sine 2a can be expressed as 2 sine a cosine a then just copy the right side then using quotient identity tangent a can be sine a all over cosine a okay then we copy the remaining expression now we can cancel cosine a, so this will be 1. Therefore, multiplying, we will have 2 sine squared a, which is the same as the right side, which is 2 sine squared a. Therefore, we were able to prove that tangent a sine 2a is equal to 2 sine squared a. I would like to suggest the following strategies in writing a proof. 
First, simplify the side having a more complicated expression in order to arrive at an expression which is exactly the same as the other. Second, when both sides have a complicated expressions, work on both sides separately and make sure to arrive at the common expression. If possible, rewrite the expression in terms of sine and or cosine only. And the third, use algebraic manipulation and techniques like expanding or factoring, combining fractions by getting the common denominator, or breaking one fraction into two fractions, and or multiplying the numerator and the denominator by a common fraction to produce a Pythagorean identity. But do not apply cross-multiplication. I hope you were able to get our lesson for today. And you have realized already the purpose of studying the trigonometric identities. See you next time.